Good morning, modern setters. Can you see the light snowflakes? They're showing up pretty good on the truck. Would you look at that? I don't want to admit it, but winter is here. <laughs> oh, we need to get the gravel spread today before the ground starts freezing. This year I'm looking forward to freeze up. I want the ground to freeze so we can get the new property logged sooner than later. I just met with the forester the other day going over the cut plan for the property. If you guys want to know more details about that, leave it in the comments down below. A lot of people are against logging, but logging is just like farming. As long as it's done properly, it's the same thing. Good morning, chickens. Trees have a lifespan just like vegetables. We gotta take care of them and take care of the forest and the property so we can maximize the use of it and so we can maximize the feed for wildlife, believe it or not. Come on in, Mr. Figaro. You decided to come back out, huh? If we don't take care of our forest, they're gonna overgrow and we're gonna have nasty wildfires like they did out west this year and I know they were set intentionally, but if you keep all your dead wood picked up and cleaned up and log your property, you don't have all that dead wood. I'm just rambling on right now about logging because I know a lot of people are against it, but man, it is a necessity when you have forest. There are the three rogue chickens, even the well summer we put into NYC yesterday's over there. Oh, you forgot your mouse traps. Every time. Every time. It's hard to get work done when you're around. It's hard to get work done. It's so soft. Leave the, leave the sauce in. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't like Figaro. You don't like Figaro being in the milk and room? No. I just want to look at him. Crunchy. Oh, quick! Cheers. You pooper. You're supposed to wait to poop till you get to the pasture. You're not supposed to poop in the milking room, girl. Hope you're all muddy. Get Mud stains on your white. Did somebody jump on you with dirty feet? I think so. Watch out. Well, good morning there, honey. You're not gonna want any of that, it's just alfalfa pellets. You gotta go back to the chicken coop for your breakfast. You boys ready for some breakfast? I'll get you some fresh hay. <laughs> your hay feed is still half full.
Well, at least the rogue chickens are still laying their eggs in the boys' goat barn, so we're not losing any egg production from them. That looks unsafe. As long as you don't break them, it's safe. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> don't crack under pressure. <laughs> we need to make a gravel floor inside of our barn, but first we gotta run over to our lumber yard and pick up some rough sawn lumber so we can form that up. You know it's starting to get cold out when I got my gloves on. I don't like having to wear gloves because it just slows everything down and it's not as convenient. We need to get at least eight, six inch wide, if not eight inch wide, pine boards, eight feet long. We got a pile of lumber over here. That one right there is perfect. That'd be number one. We just did a video the other day of our next big project. I'll put a link to that video right here. If you haven't seen it, go over there, take a look at it, and let me know what you think. But if you have seen it, what are some things you'd like to see us do over there or know about it? It's not a project that we were expecting to be taking on already, but we couldn't pass the opportunity up, and there's a lot of things we need to do over there. So, and we're gonna have fun over there too and just do a lot of exploring and checking things out. So, what are some things you'd like to see? Leave it in the comments down below. We need to finish up this project so we can start having a place to store stuff before we get too much snow. We've had a lot of people asking us when we've been building this barn slash garage why we raised it up and left it like six inches higher than the dirt. The reason we did that is I want to put a gravel floor in here. I want to do it six inches high and probably about a foot on that side. But today we're just going to go around and get it all a foot. And I don't want the dirt getting under the six by sixes because then the frost could push it up and heave it. So we're gonna form it up and we're gonna put gravel in here. And I know we're not using pressure treated wood and over time it's gonna rot, but by the time it's rotted, this gravel floor should be packed and the gravel's not gonna spread anymore. It's gonna take years for that stuff to rot. So we need to go ahead and get the forms built. Eight feet would work, but 104 would be better. There wasn't supposed to be any rain in the forecast today, or snow, but I guess Mother Nature's changed her mind.
Alex's doing a good job pinching that one. I told you winter was going to be here before we knew it. We're in a snow globe already. Ouch! That hurt. Don't help when your hands are already colder than you squish them. That's for sure. get this grade set a little bit. Got 
going to have to see if I can rent a plate compactor and then pack this afterwards. That would be really nice. When I'm coming up for different ideas for the barn, I'm modeling them after a hundred plus year old post and beam barn in our area that I know. So I've looked at a lot of the stuff they've done and how they've constructed it and go, oh, I can replicate that on our homestead. And this barn is so level and square still, it's not even funny. So like the way I'm doing this gravel floor is how they did theirs. Their barn is built on eight by eights, not pressure treated, but eight by eights. It's amazing how over time, how well it's lasted. So the barn we built last year, we did a concrete floor in the workshop and in the stalls. This year we want to see if gravel's any better for animal stalls. And then we'll put rubber mats down in this area where the stalls are going to be. All right, that's a good base layer. Now we can get the rest figured out. out of nothing no flight plan no manual to be found you and I we're driving in the dark without headlights trying to find our way it's hard telling where we'll be in the coming days but I'll be there with you Talk telling where we'll be in the coming days I'll be there with you I'll be here with you Yeah, we're getting there yeah, We've got about, let's say, five or six inches of gravel out in the back and then I'm kind of tapering it down to the front so that way we have a smooth transition going out the doors if we have enough left over I'm gonna gravel in front and then we can raise it up a little bit if we need to, but I wanna just make sure we have enough gravel to get all inside done first. And I'm gonna say we will, cause we've used about, uh, not quite a pile, but close to a pile so far. Built a wall around my heart to stop the bleeding More to make of all the words that I should have said to you And we're walking through the fire and the smoke clouds Trying to find our way It's hard telling where we'll be the coming days when I'll be Telling where we'll be the coming days when I'll be there with you. I'll be here with you. Telling where we'll be the coming days. 
Well, I think that came out a lot better than I thought it was going to. It's pretty packed, just going over it that many times with the tractor. If I can find a plate compactor to rent, I will do that because it makes it like concrete. When we used a plate contractor last, compactor, not contractor. When we used a plate compactor, when we built this barn last year, I was amazed with how well it compacted this three quarter inch gravel. I'm guessing we used about 14 yards to 16 yards of gravel in here. It's looking pretty good. Bam, the inside's just about all the way done. There's a few little low spots here and there, but I figure tomorrow we'll spread the rest of this pile, boom, out here and get the outside grade finished up for the driveway. And then with a little bit left over, we'll touch up the spot. But we're kind of low here and we pedal up pretty good. We're low in front here and on that side a little bit. It's pretty rainy right now. It wasn't supposed to rain, so we'll do that part in the morning. But it's looking good. I will admit <laughs> that took a lot longer than I thought, but I'm happy with it. I went over it quite a bit of times with the tractor to make sure it got packed because we're six to eight inches of gravel on the inside here. If we ever wanted to pour a concrete slab, we could just pour the concrete over this gravel right on. You know, you can keep it right up to the top of the six by six or right below it. It'd be perfect. But this gravel's gonna work out perfect for us. And then over here, when we put our animal stalls in, when we get animals in here, we'll get the rubber mats and put the rubber mats down. And that'll be perfect for the animals. Right now we have concrete, and on top of the concrete, we got rubber mats anyway. So it was kind of like, why waste the money for concrete if you gotta put rubber mats on top of it anyways? How many eggs are you thinking? What you do, let them out? They're flying the coop? Eight. Eight? Yeah. All your chickens are flying the coop, Livies. No, Me neither. You ladies hungry? I'll say seven eggs. Daylight is changing, so we're getting less eggs. One, three, five, Seven, nine. That's more than we've gotten in a while. I'll take that. If you ladies want to get fed, you got to go back to the other chicken coop. I'm not feeding you down here. No. Nope. You're supposed to stay in your coop. Yeah. You like it? Okay. I think it's going to pack nicely. Yeah. Right now it already is, but I mean. Once you get some. You ladies want to eat? We got to go up to the other coop. Come on. I think they're going to follow you. Yep. Come on. Go under. Go walk over that way, Olivia. Just missing one. A little bit further. There, we there you go. go. All the way around. Now you ladies need to stay in. I'm gonna make something really simple for supper tonight, chicken tacos. But I decided I wanted to make my own tortillas. So we'll see how that turns out. If not, I do have uh, some store-bought ones in the fridge. So hopefully I'll, these will turn out awesome. And maybe I'll never buy some from the store again. We will see. All right, so I have four cups of flour in there and then a tablespoon of baking powder. One and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm just going to add my oil. 
Feuer. Cut it into pieces. Last couple of shells of tortillas are cooking. I'm just gonna chop up this tomato. These ones are really good for our sauce tomato, but I've eaten quite a few of them and they are so good and very meaty. I think it'll be really good on our tacos. So, time to heal yet. Still you fight with what you're told. Hold on to your scars and wounds and pass a phone. And I said, ooh, ooh, what would you do if you could lose all your burdens? Yeah. The homemade tortilla shells are delicious. They remind me of a store-bought tortilla shell and a cross between pita bread. Can't go wrong. If you guys have never tried them, you should try making some. They're pretty simple. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead. Sorry for Tanner in the background. He's going a little crazy. And we'll see you guys right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.